the Chinese saw what you're seeing right there. Well, that was a new plane that was created for Tom Cruise to fly, and the plane looked so real that when the Chinese saw the movie, they moved a satellite, one of their spy satellites, to try and see if they could capture what was the imaginary plane. It's just one of the many data points showing Beijing is preparing for war with Taiwan while we deal with arming Ukraine and inflation. Well, the communists are watching and plotting. The Financial Times reports Chinese officials met with top bankers to discuss protecting assets from U.S. sanctions. China expert Gordon Chang, a friend of the show, we've had him on many times, says we can only think of this as Beijing making contingency plans before an invasion. He told the Daily Caller they're trying to protect themselves in the event they do, they do invade. This should be a warning to the United States that war is coming. We bring in Tennessee Congressman Mark Green, former Army Ranger, Special Operations Flight Surgeon, now member of the House Foreign Affairs and Armed Services Committee. Uh, two ways to look at this, right? Either China is emboldened sort of while America is distracted or they see what's happened to the Russians in Ukraine and they go, well, maybe not. Yeah, I think you can look at uh, both sides of the coin on this, Leland. Certainly, they're watching the West come together uh, and, and put sanctions on Russia that are having an impact. They also see Russia, this you know formidable force that everyone was afraid of, stumbling in Ukraine and, and are realizing that maybe, maybe they're not as good as they think they are either. Hmm. And so all of those things have to be taken into consideration. You look at the difference between China and Russia, though, obviously their military and the spending that's been on it and their development and all the technology they've stolen from us is a lot more uh, significant. GDP of China, 10 times larger than Russia. China, 30 times as many bank assets as Russia. Huge foreign uh, portfolios uh, in China. Uh, just there's no way to compare these two countries. Can the world come together against China if they invade Taiwan and the way it's turned Russia into an economic pariah? Yeah, I think so, because while you're, you know, sort of looking at the difference between China and Russia, I'd suggest you look at the difference economically between Taiwan and Ukraine. You know, Taiwan makes 94% of all the high-end semiconductors. The West cannot tolerate China seizing control of Taiwan. So absolutely, we're going to push back. Everyone's going to unite, and probably even more so than with Ukraine. Okay, so it's obviously always a lot easier to prevent an invasion than it is to, to fight a war. Yeah. Uh, great piece in the Wall Street Journal today about effectively turning Taiwan, in their words, into a porcupine, because a wolf can eat a porcupine, it just decides not to because it's not worth the, the trouble. Um, they suggest harpoon missiles, switchblade drones, Patriot missile battalions, more Stinger missiles, uh, which obviously we've got our own issues with uh, being able to send. Uh, F-16 fighter jets, obviously the anti-ship missiles uh, that would sink the Chinese Navy as it came across. Uh, why is there not as much of an effort to arm Ukraine as that we're seeing? Why isn't that same effort being put into arming Taiwan? Well, we've been arming Taiwan. You know, we've had the Taiwanese Defense Act for a long, I mean, it's decades. So we've been supporting Taiwan for years with military equipment and training. So that's been going on for, for really decades. So uh, could, could we do more? Should we do more? Absolutely. What we've got to do is make the consequences of China attacking Taiwan so great that they choose not to do so. That's real deterrence, right? And maybe there's some more things we should do. There's some things that we know we're doing it. We're not, you know, I'm not going to talk about on this uh, on TV, but uh, very clearly, uh, you, you know, that that theory of making it a porcupine, that's absolutely the right strategy. Is it yet? A, a, is it a baby porcupine? Is it a full porcupine? We just don't say it's a porcupine and the Chinese know that. Where where are we in the evolution of the porcupine? I, I will tell you that it will be very expensive okay. uh, for China to take Taiwan. And, and uh, obviously, I mean, it, you know, the Ukrainians really, or the Russians, I should say, really miscalculated in terms of what kind of porcupine Ukraine was as we, as we follow this out. You've been talking about it yeah. since, since the very beginning. Um, we're now learning that so much more U.S. help was given to Ukraine than anyone talked about. And I remember some smiles from you in the very beginning of the invasion. Um, and now we're learning U.S. help given to targeting Russian generals, U.S. help to targeting uh, Russian ships. Um, a lot more real-time intelligence sharing than we thought in Ukraine. Uh, have we gone past where everyone was when we said the last thing we want to do is give the Russians an excuse to come back and attack us? 
Well, I think the red line that we've put on ourselves or the constraints we've put on ourselves are Americans shooting at Russians, right? So the no-fly zone, which was a big issue at the beginning yep. of this thing, we said, nope, we're not doing that because we don't want American pilots shooting down Russian pilots. I mean, we've come very, we're right up on the edge of that, but, but we're not, we have not crossed that. And I think that is the real red line for Russia. And, and so far we've stayed on this side of that red line. If you think about sort of these tales that we heard, we now know that the ghost of Kyiv, the fighter pilot, was made up by the, the Ukrainians in their PR. No part of war is PR, so sure. no fault there. But, you know, they really aren't as good as we think they are. A lot of these Ukrainian successes basically were U.S. intel telling them where to shoot and what to do, right? Well, very clearly, their success has been, uh, you know, not only their tenacity and the training that our special forces have been doing in that country for many, many years. It's, it's, it's also the intelligence that we've given them, the equipment that we've given them. I mean, we're, we're definitely helping the Ukrainians be successful. They're acknowledging that. I mean, I was texting uh, with the foreign minister, and, and he's, they're thankful for what we're doing. Uh, but, 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 but clearly, they're the ones bleeding and dying. Yeah. And and we have to give them, you know, massive kudos for that. They're pushing back. Mariupol still hasn't been taken by the Russians. So uh, these Ukrainians are tenacious people. They love yeah. freedom and they're willing to fight and die for it. Yeah, th that's an excellent point. I think you and I in the first days of the war, you probably understood that better than I did, having been over there more recently. But um, there was there was this time for 48 hours when everybody thought this was going to be over. And now we're well past 48 days, and, yeah. and they're, they're still at it. Uh, this was Nancy Pelosi uh, in Kyiv uh, on Sunday. Take a listen. America stands with Ukraine. We stand with Ukraine until victory is won. She had just gotten back from Kyiv. Victory is won. The 2014 war in Ukraine never even hasn't ended yet. Uh, yeah. This is an extension of it. Is the American people really ready for how long victory is going to take? You know, everywhere I go, Leela and I talk about that so that people understand, particularly because I have farmers in my district and, and they're impacted by the increase the war has caused in fertilizer prices. And of course, the 14 or 13 percent wheat that comes out of Ukraine impacts their sales price at market. So I'm talking about this all the time and telling people, look, this is going to be a long war because the Ukrainians believe that victory comes when every Russian is out of Ukraine. And that means the Crimea. Now, that, that's not going to be a tomorrow thing. Yeah. And uh, if that's what we're defining as victory, and that's what the Ukrainians will define as victory, then this is going to be a long time. And I'm making sure our farmers and mm. the people in our communities know it's, it's going to be a long war. It's a great point, and you, you made it in the beginning of this, which is that if the Ukrainians aren't going to quit, uh, how can we uh, stop supporting them if they're yeah. willing to fight, fight and die there? Congressman, it's good to see you, sir. Thank good you. Happy you. Mother's Day to, to Cammie, all right? Thanks, Leland. Yes, see sir. You. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.